It's good that you are sitting, because this picture is another one you will take home and not forget. We've talked about Christian Eichmann, your fellow countryman, who got the Nobel Prize in 1929. <coughs> this picture is being taken from a publication he published in 1931 in one of the leading medical journals of Europe at the time. This is an x-ray he had taken from a patient, I think it was in Java. This is the heart, but it is not a normal heart. It is the heart of a patient with heart failure. So instead of pumping out one cup of tea of blood with every heartbeat, these patients pump out maybe half a cup of blood or even less. So what happens is more and more blood is being retained in the heart and it ultimately pumps just like that. And that explains why it gets bigger and bigger, the heart. Because blood is being not pumped out but maintained. It just extends, stretches. That's the heart of this patient that he investigated with Vitamin B1 deficiency, berry, berry. Then he injected vitamin B, B1. And this was the heart he got three weeks later from the same patient. Published. Medical journal. We've confirmed these things with a combination of micronutrients in a study that is part of the book that you will find outside, so you can read all the things that we cannot touch on in this book, why animals don't, and heart disease, um, why animals don't get heart attacks, but people do. We're coming to that question, what do you want to do? You want to live in a, in a, in a in a world where so obvious things are being continued, where the questions that are needed to be asked are not asked, are not being allowed to ask. In a world that treats, when the motor of your, when the motor of your body is getting, is running out of gasoline, that has the recommendation of exchanging the motor instead of putting gasoline in the tank? Do you want to live in a world like that? I've summarized it in this nice little picture. It's really like you, you running up to the gas station with the last drop of gasoline in your tank and say, hey, fill it up. And the guy comes out and says, no, I'm going to exchange your motor. It's exactly like that. Okay, we're not getting emotional. This is uh, the book where you can read this and many more things. Diabetes, high blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, cholesterol. I think there are copies outside. Cell medicine and AIDS, just four slides on those. Why micronutrients are an effective side effect free and affordable way of controlling AIDS. We're not saying, we're not saying we have the cure for AIDS. What we say is that it is a crime what the pharmaceutical industry does with the AIDS epidemic. AIDS, you may know, is an immune deficiency. Now we've learned immune deficiency is determined by what happens in the bone marrow because too little or inefficient white blood cells are being produced. Now the pharmaceutical company goes along and says, hey, we've, met, we've had 50 years of success with chemotherapy in cancer. The only problem was it was so hard to apply because you needed this uh, infusion system. So why don't we put it in tablets and bring it to the third world? So they're selling exactly or pretty much the same chemical substances they have applied to cancer patients, have intoxicated cancer patients, have made their business with it to the third world for AIDS. The first organ these tablets go, or this, the, the ingredients go, is the immune system, the bone marrow. 
It destroys, it damages the immune system. Now, these patients don't have cancer. They have an immune deficiency and they get as a promised cure drugs that do what? So, this, because this is so obvious what's happening there, I'm saying this, what, what's happening there in South Africa and other countries of the developing world, what the pharmaceutical companies are doing there, is nothing else than organized genocide. Remember those nine Nobel Prizes with vitamins? Most of the health benefits that were listed there were the role of vitamins in stabilizing the immune system. So we know what the, an immune deficient patient needs. It needs the fuel cell to improve the function, the production and function, optimize the function of those defense cells. We've started with the money from our foundation work in South Africa, you may know that. We, have, we are working there with community organizations. We donate the vitamins, we're not selling them, we just donate them. And we establish the results of that. These are the patients, the first patients, a group of patients, who are the first to benefit from that. Is that we're, li we're, 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 we're living again. We want to go to the press. So they themselves organized the press conference. We helped them a little bit, but it was their initiative. We want to talk. This is one of them. This is a typical sign of, a, of, a, of an AIDS patient. This is a, here the, the neck region. And they have these skin ulcers. And of course, this is past it. It is infected. And, uh, and this is uh, eight weeks later, the same patient, this young lady here, just with vitamins. You, you do not see any of this with, uh, with antiretroviral uh, drugs, with the AIDS uh, chemotherapy of, uh, of the pharmaceutical companies. You do not see that because it doesn't exist. The last segment of my talk, just a few things that we need to summarize. We've talked about the pharmaceutical industry, but it's very nice to have it in crisp few sentences, this principle. The pharmaceutical industry is not a health industry, but an investment business, accountable above all to its shareholders. The marketplace of the pharmaceutical industry is your body, but only as long as it is sick. Number three, the extension of diseases, the spread of disease, is the precondition for the continued growth of the pharmaceutical investment business. Number four, and I think the most sobering of these, four, of these five laws, the prevention and elimination of diseases is counterproductive to the pharmaceutical investment business and is therefore being fiercely fought by its lobby. So if someone like us comes along and says, hey, let's do something to re reduce the, this disease or, or perhaps even largely eliminate it, they'll fight you. You're the enemy. While in four-color, full-page advertisements every evening on TV, they present to you, we are the people there for your health. Imagine a world without diseases, Bayer. One-third of their budget, billions over a year, are spent for this deceptive advertisement. For if they would not do it, they would already gone, have gone long ago because it's, it's only these constant lies why we start to believe it, why, why we have believed it. Number five, the proven health benefits of vitamins are the largest threat to the survival of the pharmaceutical investment business and they have therefore been essentially eliminated from pharmaceutically oriented medicine. What we have to understand is that we have a choice. You have a choice. You go out tonight and you say, well, let's just uh, accept the fact that this disease is going to be around uh, for my children and grandchildren. Or you say, no. I want to at least look in the mirror and say, I've done something. Maybe we don't succeed. But if we don't try, we've already lost.